plane disguised as gorillas so that they can follow the octopus and his death ray machine to his base in the Sahara Desert, Speed, Clint, Barney, and Carlos are overtaken by a thunderstorm. Seeking shelter, they come upon a dilapidated native hut. But as they are about to enter it, they hear terrible moans issuing from its interior. Armed with nothing but a knife, the secret police decide to go inside and see what is making the noise. We find them inside now, trying to see in the darkness with only the occasional flashes of lightning for light. There's someone laying over there in the corner, Clint. Yes, but who? What? We only had a flashlight. We could... Clint, here's an old candle and some matches on this table. That's and okay. they're dry. But quick, strike one of the matches and see if they're still good. Okay. The matches are good. Gracias a Dios for that. Quick, light the candles. Now let's see who this unfortunate man is. Here you are. All right. Well, let's see. What? Why, it's a white man. Help! Help! Gorillas! That's Throw back the gorilla skins so that he can see we're men like himself. See, this poor man has fever and he is half starved. Who could have left him here like this to die? Oh, there now, old fella. See, there's nothing to be afraid of. Yes, he's too weak to talk anymore now that he sees we're not gorillas. Yes. Give him some water out of your canteen, Barney. You're the only one who has any left, I believe. You bet. Dios, that reminds me. Give me your sun helmet so that I can put them outside to catch the rain. Here's mine, Carlos. And mine. Oh, and here's Barney's, too. Gracias. I'll leave them outside and be right back to help you with these men. Now, I'll just hold your head up, fella. And you drink hearty. Oh, oh he's sure dry. Probably been without water for some time. This fever increases his thirst. Don't let him drink too fast, Barney. Don't worry. There's not enough water left in this canteen to founder him. Oh, Oh, water. Please. Well, you'll have to wait until we catch some more, pal. Water. More water. Oh, if we only had our quinine with us. Take a look around this hut speed. See if you can find anything that'll make this man more comfortable. Break that candle in half so you'll have light, too. All right, Clint. Wonder who he is. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can find any identification on him. Bet you won't. If his pockets are as full of holes as his clothes, whatever was in him fell out long ago. We'll see you anyway. Uh... It's all right. It's all right, my friend. We're just trying to help you. You know, Barney, his clothes are in rags now, but the materials is, is expensive. Look at this man's hands. Not the hands of a derelict or of a manual laborer. Hey, that's right, Clint. I think we've stumbled on a mystery here. Mystery or not, we've got to get this man to civilization, where he can have the care he needs. That is, that is if he doesn't die before we can get him there. Gosh, Clint. It's going to be tough carrying a sick man back to the plane. Chances are ten to one against us getting back alive. I know about it, but we, we've got to do it. We can't leave him here to die. Well, amigos, soon we shall have plenty of sweet water to drink. I found a big pan just outside. Stuffed up the holes in it and set that out to catch the rainwater, too. We shall have more than enough. Good, Carlos. Because this man is going to need all the water he can get. That's all we can give him right now. I can't find anything in this place, Clint. Some old tins, but they're empty. Boy, we're sure in a tough spot. I'm hungry as a bear, and it's getting doggone cold all of a sudden. See, if we are not careful, we shall all have the fever. Yeah. Speed, bring all the old tins you can find over here. And Barney, break up that old table and chair over there. What are you going to do? Build us a fire. At least we can be warm, if nothing else. By flattening the tins and placing them on the floor, we can build the fire right inside the hut. The smoke will go out that hole in the roof. Swell. That's the first good news I've had for a long time. I'll start breaking up the furniture. As soon as we get the fire built, we better shed these gorilla skins. I think we'll be a lot more comfortable. Uh, it's all right, mister. We're going to get a fire started. Clean. You won't be needing your knife for a little while, will you? Uh, no, Carlos. Why? I'll need it. I'm going out and look for some food. Oh, but it's night now. Have you a chance of finding anything? See, more of a chance than if I sat here doing nothing, Clint. But don't go too far, will you, Carlos? Else you might get lost. Don't worry, Speed. I will not get lost, I promise you. And now, adios. I will soon return with food. Hey. Hey, hey what did he say about food and where's he going? Out to look for some. But don't let that stop you. Get that wood ready so we can have a fire going as soon as possible. Feels good. Gosh, Carlos has been gone a long time, Clint. Yes, V, but don't you worry. It isn't easy to find game without any weapon but a knife. 
He'll be lucky to bring back anything. Game? What kind of game is he going to bring back? How should I know? Well, I won't care. I'm so hungry I could eat anything. Uh, not me, boy. I'd rather take off this belt I'm wearing and boil it down for soup than eat monkey. And Carlos has been talking a lot about monkey meat lately. You'll be thankful for anything that Carlos brings back, Barney. If you have any sense. Well, I don't think you'll find any monkeys anyhow. The jungle's awful quiet after that storm. The rain probably drowned all the animals. Rained hard enough. Hey, how's our friend on the floor coming along? He uh, seems to be sleeping, Barney. I hope. <coughs> hey, look, Lucky's going to the door. That must be Carlos now. It's a gorilla. <laughs> Don't worry, amigo. It is me. And what is more important, food. I have brought home the bacon, boys. What? Look, I have even cut it all up. It is ready to cook. Bacon, huh? What kind of bacon? Uh, how is the sick one, Clint? Well, quiet for the giant being. Uh, give me some of that meat, Carlos. I've heated some water in this one big tin. By adding the meat, we can make some broth for him. That'll give him some strength, I hope. See, see, a good idea. Uh, how do you want to fix the rest of the meat? I brought some green sticks along in case you wanted to barbecue it over the flames. Yes, that will be the quickest way to cook it, I guess. Here, let's have them. Mmm, boy, that meat you dropped into the hot water is beginning to smell good already, Clint. I hope it tastes as good, Speed. Now, here's a stick with your meat on it. You'll have to cook it, though. Swell. This is going to be fun. What kind of meat is this, as I said before? And look, Lucky, I brought the bones back for you. Do you want them? <laughs> I thought so. Here you are, amigo. Ah, that will keep him out of the way for a while. Gosh, listen to that meat cooking. Makes my mouth water. Oh, I almost forgot. Here are some bananas I found on the way. There are only two, but we can divide them. Oh, that's good. We can eat those while we cook the meat. Uh, here's a stick, Barney. Put some meat on it if you want to eat. Of course I want to eat. But I'd like to know what I'm eating. Oh, uh, look. Here is an old cup. It is cracked, but I think it will hold the broth for our friend there. Oh, that's fine, Carlos. I was wondering how we could feed it to him. The tin it's cooking in is pretty hot. Broth looks like it's ready, Clint. Yeah, oh, here. Hold my stick, Speed, while I transfer it into the cup and feed him some of it. Okay. There we are. Now then, let's see if he'll drink it. Water. Water. All right, now, here. You drink this. Oh, that's fine. I think that's enough for the time being. Thank you. Hey, that broth must be magic. It brought him around right away. See, it came from good meat, Barney. Maybe he can answer some questions now, Clint. Tell us who he is. Yes, I... I am... John Buchanan. What? What? Buchanan? The missing investor. Gosh, Mrs. Buchanan will sure be glad to hear we found her husband. My wife. Is she safe? Yes, Mr. Buchanan. Safe and well in Leopoldville. Who are you? We're members of the International Secret Police. We've been looking for you ever since coming to Africa. But had almost given up hope until we stumbled on you here in this forsaken spot. Thank heaven you came in time. You are... Clint Barlow, sir. Then I... I know I live to see the... Octopus brought to justice. You will succeed where I fail. I hope so, sir. But now, you better not say any more. We've got to get you back to Leopoldville, where you can receive the proper medical care and see your wife once yes. more. Yes. Yes, and when, when I'm strong once more, believe me, I'll do everything humanly possible to aid you. You'll be a valuable witness against the octopus, Mr. Buchanan. And probably will be able to supply many of the facts of his African activities, which have been puzzling us. Yeah, you must know plenty, or he never would have kidnapped you. I have been held prisoner here for weeks. I lost track of time up until a few days ago. A native guard fed me and prevented me from escaping. And I came down with fever. Even he left me to die. Boy, it's sure lucky we came by when we did. The octopus. Where is he now? On the Sahara Desert, we believe. At the Atlantean Expedition Base. The meat is ready, Clint. Well, I can certainly use it. <laughs> now, you just rest, Mr. Buchanan, while we eat. Try and get some more sleep, because, you see, uh, we leave here at dawn. Very well. Thank you. All of you. It's all I can say right now, but... It's from my heart. Well, that's all right. Now, just rest and know that you're safe at last. Yes. Safe. Safe 
At last. Friends. Poor guy. Look at him. Sound asleep. Yes, he's exhausted. Takes some time to recover from his horrible experience. Taste the meat, Clint. It's swell. It must be good for you, too. Look how I brought Mr. Buchanan around. Mm, the best meat I ever tasted. You like it, Barney? Mm, I'll say I do. I thought you would like monkey meat when you finally became hungry enough. Yeah, it's swell. It's got... Uh, monkey meat? Oh. <laughs> oh, come on, Barney. Quit clowning and eat it. <laughs> now, listen. We've got to get to the plane tomorrow, or I don't think we'll have much chance of ever reaching it. Suffering Wangdoodles. The octopus, the enemy of all mankind, is on the loose again. It's up to 15-year-old Speed Gibson to track him down and capture this supervillain. Speed's uncle, Clint Barlow, made Speed a member of the International Secret Police. Now Speed and his crew on board the, their plane, the Flying Clipper, search for the octopus through Africa and the Orient to save the Earth. Speed and Barlow would use the best of modern technology, including this newfangled thing called a shortwave radio, to track down the octopus. If you like your corn covered with cheese, then this is the corniest, cheesiest series you can find. For those who still want to belong to the International Secret Police, give a listen to Speed Gibson. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week.